Today's video is going to be a turning video, believe it or not, as promised last time. And it's going to be my entry for the annual Christmas Ornament Challenge that's hosted by Carl Jacobson and Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Thanks a lot guys for doing this once again this year. And it's, and it's always a very exciting and enjoyable event to take part in. What I'm going to be doing is uh, making, I'm going to be turning a Christmas man, a Christmas man. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh dear, the Christmas man. <laughs> oh dear, it's terrible when you laugh at your own jokes and bloopers, but there you go. Oh, so I'm going to be turning the Christmas man. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I think we better cut and, and, and start again. Hello again and welcome. Today... <laughs> Oh, I'm never going to get this done otherwise. Hello again and welcome. This is not a professional introduction because I've had so many tries, I've been laughing and I can't help it, so I do apologise. Today's video is going to be a turning video. Um, I am going to be making a snowman, which is my entry in the annual Christmas ornament challenge that's set up and sponsored by... Carl Jacobson and Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Thank you very much guys for doing that again this year. Uh, my entry is going to be a snowman and um, it's, <laughs> it's going to be made, as, I'm laughing because I said Christmas man, okay. It's going to be a snowman made out of cherry and I'm going to be doing the, the eyes and the buttons from some ebony buttons I'll turn and um, the nose will be out of purple heart. So we'll see how that comes on. I'd also like to make a massive thank you to my YouTube friends, uh, Carl Jacobson for one, Stephen Ogle um, and many others who will be coming on board hopefully to promote our UK and Ireland Wood Turning Symposium next June in 2016. I really, really appreciate your support lads, I really do. And I also really appreciate the support from the guys that had faith in us from, from day one when we decided to um, up the ante a bit from about a dozen of us meeting in a, for a pie and a pint in a pub uh, to the full-blown event that is going to be taking place next year. Um, thanks too to Steve and Martin, your work has been tireless and fantastic and without you nothing would have got anywhere near where it is now and in fact I doubt very much if the event would have been able to take place. So. Thanks a million to both of you. I can't thank you enough. And it is a great pleasure working with you. Not that I do an awful lot, as you know. However, as well as, as, well as that, I'd like to thank all, the, all, the, um, all my subscribers for sticking with me, because the videos have been a little bit bitty of late. Um, I make no apologies for the grand entrance of the last video. That was just a bit of fun, um, but I wanted to really give people to sit up and take notice because we are absolutely passionate about uh, the UK IWS and we are going to ensure that it is a great success and everybody that goes there is going to have a really nice time and can't wait for the next one. And uh, really that's about it and I will put links down below to our website, our uh, Facebook page and obviously the two lads that are doing most of the work, Steve Twiddell and uh, Martin Sapin Smith and Martin will be giving I believe weekly updates on our progress on his videos and uh, pop across to Martin's channel and keep really up to date with that. So thank you everybody really who is supporting us and I'll stop talking now and we'll get across and make our Christmas ornament. Sid, listen. Okay so what I have here is a uh, piece of cherry it's about three inches in diameter at the moment, it'll be a bit less than that by the time I've rounded it off and it's about five and a half inches long. I've got, it, I've got the blank between centres, uh, my stab centres and I've got to use a roughing gouge to bring it down to round. And I'm turning about 1500 grits. Okay, as you can see here, we've got a crack, and cherry is round for that, although I sealed the ends. 
So what I'm going to do is to fill it with CA and a bit of sawdust and let it set up and hopefully we can stop it from checking anymore. So I'll okay, come back. So I filled the, um, the crack with uh, a mixture of sawdust and CA glue and I've let that dry now so hopefully that will um, allay any further cracking. My next job is to establish a tenon on the end to fit into my dovetail jaws and I'll do that at this end and um, because there's no cracking at this end at all and that should make a more stable tenon. And just take my skew chisel just to establish the angle of the dovetail. Now I just want to um, just true that up again. I'll just take my skew chisel. On the head, I think, about here. And then we'll have the body here. Something to work on. So now I'm going to uh, form the head. pause so <laughs> what I've got to sorry about that what's happened is now I'm using acrylic paint I'm using a, um, a cheap acrylic paint from the from the hobby shop and <clears throat> I have put two layers of white over the cherry no sealer anything just straight on there and dried it off with the aid of a heat gun and then I put a third coat on and as that coat is starting to dry, I'm literally stippling with the end of the paintbrush to give a textured effect. And I found through trial and error that that's better than doing it when it's completely wet because what happens is, as it's drying, it tends to flatten out a bit. So if you wait until it's sort of three quarters dry if you like and then rough up the surface by stippling the um, the paint with the end of your paintbrush and then I'm going to let that dry naturally and I don't know how long that'll take maybe half an hour or so um, made a mistake here um, I put the red scarf bit in before which is a mistake so I've just covered that over and I'll I'll redo that when the white is completely dry. And there's the crack at the back, um, which is hardly noticeable now, um, which is not a problem. And uh, we'll go from there. I'll come back when that has dried. So the next thing I want to do now is to paint the uh, little scarf red. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna turn the lathe on as slow as it'll go and very carefully um, apply red acrylic 
and hopefully not get any overrun. I'm now going to lay out some um, marks for three buttons which I'm going to make from um, ebony. Doesn't have to be exact, just an approximation of where I'm going to drill the holes and I shall make the buttons out of ebony and with a little um, tenon to fit in there and super glue it. And then we want somewhere for the nose which I think will be there and that I'm going to make out of purple heart, a little carrot nose and then two little eyes, one there and one there. Okay, I've just parted him off and just cleaned the little nub there and made sure it was concave so that it sits nicely on the edges. So we'll put him aside, I'll sand that off, just that little nub, and we'll start turning the hat and the nose and the eyes. So what I've got here is just black acrylic paint and I'm just uh, liberally applying that to uh, Sid's hat and when that's done we'll part the hat off and then go on to the nose and the eyes. So I had an idea um, as I'm not being able to turn the Padoot bowl that I was given by Rob Summerlin, I decided to do the nose out of a tiny bit of offcut from the bowl blank that I got. So I'm using Padoot for the nose and it looks a little bit more orange. It's only a tiny piece, about an inch long. So let's see if we can round it off. Yeah, I think that'll do. I'll sand that up and come back in a minute. At least I've turned some Badoop. What I've decided to do here is I'm not going to put a finish on this actually. Um, I've sanded up just to 240. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, scotch pad just to burnish it. And we've got a nice finish there anyway. Because carrots aren't too shiny, are they? <laughs> If you can see that, with his little nose. Because I don't want to become a laughing stock with my big hands, the I have actually super glued, uh, CA glued um, up to now what you see. And the only way I can do it without getting CA on the piece is to put the CA glue on the end and very carefully place it in the hole and hold it down. So, um, but that will just show you the method I used. So they're all stuck in now and finally we have the the hat and as I explained I've left that um, in the middle there clear of paint 
and then that will go on his head. Central. There we go. I'll put a photograph at the end, Sid the Snowman, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers now.